Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Welcome back to the channel. It's been two years since I decided to install AC in the RX-7. That started a series of events that led me to where I am right now. Anyway, on today's video, I wanted to share my experience on building this engine. This actually is my first rebuild ever, so I feel excited. I learned a lot. I just want to share everything. I want to share some stuff also and document some process that I didn't do like others and see if it works or if I have a failure, then I can confirm and uh, not repeat it again. That way I learn, y'all learn, everybody learn. And let's start with the rotors. These rotors were from the engine that I went to pick up and I identify a lot of weird shit on that engine so I wanted to inspect everything. And uh, yeah, I found out that the oil control ring springs, some of them were not locking on the bevel that the rotor has. They were gonna wear at some point and uh, have issues. Also, some of the oil control rings, I realized that uh, were used. The way you know is on the oil control ring, you see more wear and you can see the shiny area is thicker. So I decided to replace those as well from new ones. Let's talk about side seal clearance. You have to identify each corner and the letter that I utilize is because of the kit that I purchased that helped me identify which one is which. Uh, you put the side seal clearance, make sure that both uh, tips are pointing upward so it doesn't fall below the corner seal. And you have to set up everything. You have to put the corner seal spring, corner seals, side seal springs, and side seals. Side seals come from factory larger. And this is one of the things that I wanted to show and document in case I have a failure. The way that it's supposed to be is on a sign paper and uh, yeah, you have to take your time and remove material until it fit between corner seals. However, I decided to use this method using the Dremer and uh, it was faster, but there's a big risk. The risk is you have to make sure that the material that you're removing from the side seal is straight. It doesn't have like a curve because it might lose compression. Also, don't push the side seal to the Dremer. Just let the Dremer do their thing. And then once you remove it, make sure that there's no material on the opposite side of the side seal. What I did that is not recorded is once I remove the material from the side seal, then I use a sandpaper on the table and I was trying to make the side seal flush. And that's what I inspect if it had angle or not. This helped organize side seals, corner seals. All right, let's assemble the engine. First, you want to put the stationary gear on the front part. Make sure you put one bolt and then you flip the iron and you start assembling that way. Here, you don't have to create a mess. You just put enough to make sure that the coolant seal uh, is just gonna stay. So you can use the tip of the hylomar, don't cut it too wide, and it just fits perfectly in the groove. Here, do you want to put the connection of the side seal? It has like a green spot in the intake area. That is the coldest area of the whole engine. Here, you just, you just want to make sure it doesn't flip. Um, when I did it, it was cold, the temperature outside. So you can feel the coolant seals were kind of like brittle. And what I did, I just grabbed a heat gun and uh, apply a little bit of heat. And then it was easier to work with. You just want to make sure that they don't flip, they want to twist. And uh, the Hylomar helps when it gets dry. It's, it becomes sticky and then it's easy to control the coolant seal. Same with the outer one. This one was kind of a pain in the butt as well, 
But again, once the hilum are kind of start drying, it, it becomes sticky and it's, it's a lot easier. Add a little bit of loop, just because metals, right? I just want to make sure that the first crank, when I turn on the engine, is not metal on metal. The trick here on the rotors have to be 180 degrees apart. One is pointing up in my, the way I did it, and then the other rotor is pointing down. Here, I'm just making sure that all the corner seals and the corner seal springs are aligned perfectly. So it's easier for me whenever I have to put the apex seal and then push it down, and I don't have to remove anything else. I don't want to brag, but all of them, all six of the apex seals went on the first try, so. I guess I did something right. Here you're trying to minimize the movement of the rotor because that can shift the corner seals. And before you put in the housing, then make sure that you don't forget to put silicone on the lower area of the iron. Here you can't see, but there's an O-ring on the other side, on the front side of the housing. You just put Hylomar on the area and you'll see it later when I do it um, here on camera. But on the front side, there's actually an O-ring with Hylomar as well. Again, the Hylomar will dry and it will keep the O-ring in place. These are the dowel pins to maintain everything in place. And in my engine, I have two extra ones just to maintain the engine, like prevent flexing. This is a tricky part, putting the apex seals and the springs. The trick for me, the way it was easy, put the apex seal with the outer spring, like a quarter in or a quarter of it inside of the rotor. That way just the spring keep the apex putting pressure on the housing and then you're able to put the inner spring. Again, tricky first time, but I think the hardest part of assembling the rotary engine is just that initial part because once you put the middle plate, everything else repeat. And then with the screwdriver, because I don't have nails, you press the rest of the apex seal all the way in. And that's how you know if the corner seal was sealed properly. This is what I'm saying. This is the O-ring that I was talking about. There's two, one in the front part and then one in the rear part. And here I wanted to document it too because I started assembling the engine and I realized that I didn't have all the O-rings that go there they're four needed. So I use some Viton O-rings that I had. But the size work, it was similar to the OEM, but not quite. So it's hogging the, the dowel pins. If I lose all pressure, that's the first thing that I'm gonna think about. The corner tips, some people glue it to the apex seal. Um, Again, this is my first time, so I just did it that way. One thing that I'll say though, once you put the corner, the tip of the apex seal, put grease on it a lot. Don't do what I did here and you'll see later why. In my case, I was using um, 
I wasn't using the grease for cars, I was using something else. But just put more because when you're putting the middle plate, it's kind of tricky and if you move the rotor too much, the corner tip is, gonna, is just gonna fly. And if you fall inside of the coolant jacket, oh my goodness. Thank God I didn't have to deal with that, but I got scared. Here you want the one leg pushing the E-shaft up so you can tilt the middle plate and, and then it's able to go in. It's tricky. You see what I'm saying? I'm here to pick up Casey, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I'm awake and I speak English, so yeah, I do know what you're saying. Here, don't put it flush. Uh, put it over the dowel pins to inspect. And that's when I found out, oh wait, hold on. I'm missing something. Say, hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. So I put the corner of the apex seal, pressed it again, put more grease, inspect everything, inspect the coolant seals. And then once it's good, you just press it down. In this part of the engine, this other half is just the same thing. The only difference is that the rotor goes 180 degrees from the other one. Here, double checking the corner seals, corner seal springs. The housing again, make sure that the front o-ring is installed. Silicone on the middle plate. Dowel pins. And then the apex seals. Here you can see it better. Inner spring is kind of tricky, but again, once you repeat it, it's a lot easier. And this feeling is amazing. Let's go. You see here, I put more grease on it. <laughs> it happened to me once, but it doesn't happen twice. Make sure the rear iron is completely touching the housing and then just put the stationary gear. Stationary gear has like, um, like an area that a dowel pin goes. But make sure you put it correctly. I mean, it goes only one way. And then I utilize two blown studs Hit, so make sure you loop them before you put them in. Once you put them in, you grab a Allen key, or in my case, I utilize a drill. Tie them up and then you torque them. I'm gonna put on the screen the torque pattern 
and with two blown, you can torque them higher than the factory one. I think the maximum is 77 foot pounds. And so far, it sounds really healthy. So far. I wanted to include this clip because I wanted to show these are Cosmo 13RE plates. However, um, the previous builder of this engine made, uh, tapped the holes to fit the RX-7 engine mounts. Normally, the engine mounts for this engine uh, is, is different. It doesn't go on that rear iron. I utilize Bansai brace to prevent oil leaks, which are common. And here you can see how, how well the RX-7 engine mounts fit. Here I want to show you how I was able to remove the air pump bracket from the water pump housing. For me, that's an eyesore. And you'll see how it turns out. It's not, it's not that hard, actually. You just have to be careful, don't damage the water pump housing. Here, I'm removing the previous gasket. Covering the areas that I don't want to paint. Sanding them out because if not, it's going to flake. Voila! Somebody come and look at this. First engine rebuilt. And um, I don't know, I feel proud. And this is it. All of you are caught up. The engine bay is also painted, but that's gonna be for my next video. And I'll show you how I did everything, what I decided to cover, what I decided to shave. I didn't do anything crazy, but for the next video. Here, I wanna show you, this is my favorite part. The housing has that ugly thing out, and it also has like one of these. What? They are my Crocs. In top, that goes to the rear iron. And uh, yeah, it, it looks so good, so cool. I decided to use this one versus the OEM one. And then I modify the top part to be able to use this cap. And that's it. The only thing pending right now is to port match the lower intake manifold. This is to blown. I already port match the spacer for the LS throttle body and uh, yeah once I get the die grinder tomorrow I'll be able to finish that clean everything out remove all those particles and that's it for today's video follow me on my journey hopefully I can finish the AC series that I started two years ago if you follow my videos hopeful like and subscribe that helped me a lot and see you in the next video